Here is an example problem involving a ramp with friction. First, we must read the statement of the problem. The reading involves making note of all the important variables. For force problems, this may include clues about the mass, the types of forces, and the geometry of the situation. Don't forget to take special note of what is being asked. In this case, it is the acceleration that is unknown. Next, you must set up a free body diagram. Use the rules you have learned about how to represent outside forces to indicate them and their direction in the diagram. In this case, weight, also known as the force of gravity, points straight down. The normal force is perpendicular to the contact surface and friction is opposite the slide. The free body diagram must include a coordinate system. It is easiest to set up the coordinate system along the acceleration vector. In this case, the acceleration is down along the ramp. Note that the acceleration vector is not included in the diagram, rather to the side, as to not mix different types of quantities. You must set up components for any force that are not along the coordinate axis. In this case, the force of gravity has an X and a Y component. We also derive expressions for each. Now we are ready to apply Newton's second law. Because this is a problem that involves friction, it is important to first get an expression for the normal force. The normal force is along the y-coordinate, along which there is no acceleration. Hence, in this case, the magnitude of the normal force must equal the magnitude of the y-component of the force of gravity. Along the x direction, the forces are the x component of the force of gravity in the positive x direction and the force of kinetic friction in the negative x direction. Keep in mind that the force of kinetic friction 
is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. We can substitute in our expression for the normal force from the previous step. It is recommended to solve for the unknown symbolically first. This way, when we simplify, some of the variables may cancel out. This way, when we plug in bit, numbers, and units, we have less to calculate. Note that because we set up our coordinate system with the acceleration vector already along one of the axes, the acceleration along that axis is going to be our total acceleration. Note that our solution did not depend on mass. This is not always the case, but it is important to look for in problems where all of the forces in some way depend on mass. Finally, do not forget to reread the problem, checking that you included all of the considerations and you have answered the question.